Welcome back. In keeping with our amazing theme of this show, our next guest is literally in her title, The Accidental <laughs> Artist. <laughs> my friend Barbara Crawford, who has actually been my friend for many, many years before she was the accidental artist. Right, long before. Has been living her dream in many, many forms. So in this show, we're talking about the dreams that we still have inside that perhaps we haven't manifested and brought to reality. Barbara, thank you. Welcome to the show. <laughs> uh, thank you for having me. I'm super excited. I'm so excited to see you here in your studio, in your apron, surrounded by your amazing art. Now, I know that this has not always been your profession. So tell us a little bit about your backstory and then bring us into your accidental artist self. Okay. So first of all, thank you, Lauren. It's been a while. We haven't talked. It's been a long while. Uh, let's see. Uh, prior to this, I've been a Weight Watcher leader, a coach, business coach, went through all that training and then developed a program to work with trauma, victims of violent crime, then realized PTSD around 2008 wow, this could work with veterans. So I started working with uh, Vietnam vets. So there were older memories. And I thought if it works with that, then it can work with new vets. So then I started work working with troops all over the world via Skype back in the day, presume. And then I was asked to go to Fort Hood to be a coach there, but they didn't know what to do with me because I'm not a therapist with a degree. I'm not a nonprofit. And I said, just don't pay me, just give me room. And so they gave me free range and now it's called Cavasso, Fort Cavasso. And so I moved to Texas because I'd also met a Texan on a bicycle ride for veterans and married him. And he worked on Fort Hood as an army civilian. So anyways, that we lived there for three years after we were married and loving it, worked with thousands of troops, big groups, one-on-ones, couples, children even, and helped them reduce anxiety, stress and trauma and live the life that they deserve to. So I did thousands and thousands of hours there and then was called home to take care of my parents. So I came home to take care of my parents in California and um, my mom passed away and we stayed with my dad because he had severe Parkinson's. And so in 2019, um, we took like a six month trip and then came back. We live in our RV too. So uh, when we came back, taking care of dad and everything, COVID hit put him in an apartment with full-time caregivers and us on call. And I thought, well, I'll write my babies, grandbabies, a little book called um, Adventures Grandma and Grandpa Take the Little Peas On because their names start with P. And so as I was writing the book, I also started drawing just for fun to see if I could illustrate it. And it was just going to be a simple picture book. And next thing I know, I pulled out my mom's 35-year-old, 40-year-old paintings, uh, paint supplies and started just messing with ice trays full of water and watercolor because it's watercolor, right? <laughs> so I even used oil brushes, which I didn't know anything. And I made this book. And my kids were like, Mom, when did you become an artist when we sent it to him? And I was like, oh, I don't know. I'm not really an artist. I was just playing. And then I thought, well, maybe I'll send cards to my friends. So I did florals and things during COVID. And then I thought, oh, I'll paint my dog. So I painted my dog and my sister's dog. And all of a sudden people are saying, can I order a bunch of your cards? Can I? Because um, they were all originals and frameable pieces of art. People were framing them all over the place. And so then people started asking if I could do their pets. And I went, oh, I guess I'm an accidental artist to one of my coaching clients and she said that's your name so thank you Nella and so I became BB the accidental artist and then people were like why don't you show your art and I was like oh I guess I could so I started doing art shows with other artists and the next thing I knew that's what I was primarily doing is painting and learning and YouTube was my college um fabulous artists on there that are so willing to help you train, especially during COVID. And I upgraded all my product. And because at the beginning, Lauren, I was buying old greeting cards that people would donate to thrift shops. And then I'd put my art on the front of these blank note cards and glue it on there. And so that's how I was doing it at first, because I didn't want to spend a lot of money on something. And then all of a sudden, people wanted dozens of them. And that's how I became the accidental artist. So. <laughs> I typically fall into what I do next, <laughs> typically through my divorce. That's how I got into coaching. 
was someone said, well, you can, I want to be a therapist. I'll go to school. And they were like, no, you don't need to go to school. Just be a coach and do their training. And I did. And then that took off. And so I've always fallen into my next chapter and I just became passionate and became my Zen zone. And people have joy when they walk in our tent, because it's very different. It has um, lace and all the art hanging on it and they just love coming in it. And then typically they buy stuff too. So that's great. <laughs> but anyways, that's how, that's how it all happened. Thank you. Thank you for sharing all that. And what a journey and what a story. And I believe every one of us has our own journey and story. We just don't necessarily look at it as a step-by-step -step and a through line, right? There's, right? there's always a thread that carries us through your willingness to be open to seeing what's coming next and then try new things has kept you moving forward and yes. helped you meet the love of your life. And right. You know, and I, yeah. It's, it's just no really regret. fun. If you, no. Yeah. It just to move forward. And um, what I discovered through doing art is I don't invite anybody, any of my adult committee behind me, you know, that's in your head telling you, you can't do that. I only invite my five-year-old and then she and I play. And I know that it sounds a little strange, but I had an 80 year old man ask me once, how old are you when you paint? Don't take offense at one of the art shows. And I said, oh, I'm five because I don't want the inner critic to show up. And you don't develop an inner critic to your six and eight typically. And I actually was listening to a study on that. And uh, Jack Canfield, Canfield was talking about it. And so he said, oh, I can only get the nine. I want to get free at five. And that just really blessed me because it didn't make me feel too crazy. It made me feel like, okay, I'm doing this right. So I just try things and I'm doing face uh, portraits now of people, which I never thought I could do and was intimidated. And I thought, well, my five-year-old would do it, even if it's a stick figure and it developed. So amazing. Yeah. And, and I love that you're, again, it's your passion about everything that shows up in front of you that makes all the difference. <laughs> your willingness to acknowledge, recognize, play, right? Welcome your five-year-old. Most of us don't stay in constant communication with our five-year-old, but I think the world might be a whole lot happier if we did. Oh, definitely. And the other thing about it that also mixes with the trauma work that I did was our Zen zone, that place we are when we're a little kid and people say, get your head back in here, quit daydreaming. That's that neutral space that has no criticism, it's curious. And without with curiosity, there's no judgment. You can't carry curiosity and judgment at the same time. They shut each other down. So when you're curious, the world is open to you. And no matter what age, I mean, I started this at 59. So I'm 64 now, going to be 64. And um, I knew as a kid, I wanted to be a writer and an artist at some point. I wrote it down in a, my third grade or something paperwork that I found. And we started laughing, my husband and I, because he's like, well, that's what you're doing now. <laughs> so, yeah, so I write and do that. But my coaching tip is if you want to try something, just stay curious about it. Right. Go to right. the people that are succeeding in it and hang out with them via YouTube or a friend and follow their steps because they're doing what you want to do. So. My coach well, and interestingly, this the theme for this show came about because I went to a workshop that made me do something that not only terrified me, yeah. but also forced me to shut down my inner critic and just right. go for it, right? right? Singing from stage and not breaking people's eardrums was, all, you know, I'm the older child, the perfectionist. So if I don't do it perfectly, I don't do it in public. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll do things behind closed doors. But I, I realized that this was an opportunity I had to be with people who were those few steps ahead of me, like you say, you know, they were, they were composing their own songs and performing their own songs. And these are not professionals, but they may be now. Right. Yeah. And for me, it was just an opportunity to get up on stage behind a microphone, belt it out. Right. Someone's not in my shower or on my dog walk. Right. That is the beauty of, of uh, today. You know, you walk around with um, ear pods in. And people don't think you're crazy anymore when they see you talking. They think you're on the phone. So I'm just walking the dog singing and she's saying, oh, my God, please shut up. And, Hello. 
<laughs> no, she's not. We, she's actually quite used to it. It's part of our routine. I love but, it. You know, again, the willingness to be curious, be brave, mm -hmm. and not listen, not only to your inner judge, but to other people's judgments. Because right. if you see people loving what you're doing, you want more of that. You you right. want to do more of that because you are a person of service and of love. And if they are asking for more of your service and more of your love, this is simply your newest delivery system. Right, yeah. And, and that is so true because we did a tiny little display in front of an antique store in Santa Margarita last week and last weekend. And this woman came up and she just had tears in her eyes and she said, I just love your work. It's so different. All of it is different because some of it's, she, it's, she said, it's like you have four or five people in you that paint. Like I have the very exactness of like the animals. They look very much like the animals that I, uh, from the photos. Then I have the real playful kind of folk art. And then I have the florals and some of it can be very real looking like a real flower or more abstract even. And she was saying, there's just so much joy and inspiration. And I was in tears. And then I said, well, I'm now trying portraits. And um, she goes, oh, what was your first portrait? And I told her it was a young man that had overdosed from fentanyl and that he literally woke me up and said, I want you to paint this for my grandma. So I started, I asked for his favorite photo of hers and painted it. And she said, my son died three years ago from fentanyl and so we had this moment and that's what I live for is that moment of sharing and she purchased some art and then I gave her some art and I just said I just and, you know and I think is it okay if I hug you and my husband's watching he goes that's the magic you do no matter what it is he keeps yeah. selling ice cubes to an Eskimo and you would make it this warm beautiful transition you know transaction and that's really what I live for. I don't need to sell a lot of art at the art shows, but if I connect with people, encourage older artists to get back to art because they feel like they're too old now. And I'm like, no, you're robbing the world of your gift. And I think all of us need to live into the gifts we have. And like you said, I couldn't get up on stage, at least at this point in my life and sing. I'll talk, but I, I don't know that I could sing um, at this point, maybe someday. Someday. But Janice we all have it in us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> It's yeah, the gifts yeah. you can give from that. And I'm sure when people see you sing, they, your beauty and your voice, they're just like really touched by the song that you sing. And well, if they are or, they're, or they aren't, I didn't physically hurt anyone. And that was very right. important to me. <laughs> oh, stop it. I no, am sure it was, people The feedback was very positive. It was a warm audience. It was very, very kind. But I did it. And I think right. that, you know, there is no age at which we stop learning, we stop being. The, the beauty of what you say is that you are living your life right now in the greatest passion and the greatest excitement yes. of, of what's available to you, like every right. moment, every moment. And that's how I want people to feel every day when they wake up and yes. you are a shining example. Where can people find you? I have uh, Instagram and a Facebook and it's BB the Accidental Artist. I'm starting to post more. Um, I had a little bit of a lull for a while because when my dad passed away and all that stuff, um, grief and estate planning and all that. Um, so now I'm very much more active on uh, BB the Accidental Artist on Instagram and uh, Facebook. And I'm going to start posting more and more of my framed work too. I just got into a store, the Natural Toolbox and Pismo at the outlet. They accepted me. And um, also at Lopez Lake where we live as Campos in our um, RV. And we have this big trailer now with a studio, which I'm excited about. I but we're going to be doing shows there every weekend. Um, and if someone comes in just for my art, I will give them their $12 pass to get in um, off of whatever art they buy over a certain amount, of course. Wow, nice. <laughs> so, okay, well, yeah. we're going to post your access, your coordinates, and yeah. I know people are going to want to learn more. And while we've been talking, we've been showing your art. So oh, it's, okay. it's really, really just so fun. And I'm so proud of you and so happy for you and thrilled that we've been reconnected through I this. So thank you for coming to join us. Oh. Thank and we look forward to seeing you again. Thank, Thank you, you, Lauren. You have a great day. And we'll be right back.